give him praise, honor, and glory. You know, it's not a small thing when we say, Lord, I thank you. It's not a small thing when we say, thank you, Jesus. But it ought to be a great thing because of whom we speak about. Amen? I'm glad to know him. And we are living in such a time that I'm just so impressed in my spirit by the, by the spirit of God that with humanity, society, the whole situation, the whole circumstance is in such a depraved condition. Yes. Depraved condition. Yes. Uh, that we are calling right wrong and we're calling wrong right. Yes. right. But I'm glad that the Lord can keep us the light on in our spirit so that we know right from wrong. Yes. I recognize that even our own efforts are, are vain and empty except God will move on our behalf. America needs a move of God to change our disposition, to change our attitudes, to change our hearts so that we honor the Lord for who he is and give God all the praise that's deserving of his name. We need revival, beloved. We need still need revival. Amen. 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 We need revival, beloved. We need revival. The prophet Zechariah said in Zechariah 9 and 6, or 4 and 6, said, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Nor by might, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. In other words, God will move by his spirit on our behalf because we need revival. Yes. When it seems like society has reached its end, yeah. then believe me, we are in need of revival. That's right. We are in need of the move of God on our behalf. When we see ourselves getting lazy and lax and complacent, we need revival. We need a move of God in our life, in our homes, in our situations, and in our circumstances. And we can indeed trust God for the results. Yes. Amen. 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 God is faithful. Yes, God is faithful. Sometimes God got to give you a booster. He got to give you a checkup. Got to give you a jump start so that you know in whom you have believed yes. and take him at his word. Look at our text here in Acts, the second chapter, <clears throat> excuse me, beginning at the 37th verse. Now when they had heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized in the same day that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking, the, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. If I might use for a word this morning, it would be act up, act up, act up. When you consider the book of Acts, you um, uh, have to take into account that the book of Acts chronicles the birth of the church as well as the acts of the apostles. The, act, the book of Acts uh, uh, authorship is credited to the Apostle Luke, who also is responsible for the Gospel of Luke. Uh, when you consider it, when you look at that, you see that the Gospels always had somewhat of the same flow in the closing part of the Gospel. That's why I like the fact there's 
four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And even though some of the events are in Psalms and are not in other Gospels, it's the Holy Spirit is unique enough that everything uh, complements one from another. Amen. You can have what is said in John doesn't conflict with what's in Luke, nor what's in Luke conflict with what's in Matthew. It all uh, is uh, cohesive and comes together as a result of the knitting and the glue of the Holy Spirit. That's why no man didn't write the Bible. That's right. um, so a lot of times people hold the scriptures up for questioning, but when you look deep down in the scripture, you can see that nobody could have done this, that God's fingerprint is on the word of God, and that God spoke as and holy men wrote as God spoke unto them. And the Bible is just intertwined with the will and the wisdom of Almighty God. So when you look at the book of Acts, what's interesting is, is that it, it continually speaks. A, a common theme um, kind of concludes even in the latter part of Acts, uh, as well as in the latter part of Luke. It talks of a common theme. Go ye, remember me and wait for the promise. He was always sending forth his disciples, so the Lord kind of left this on record before he departed. If you look at Luke 24 and 46, Luke 24 and 46, it said, and, and said unto them, thus is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in the name, in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So there's a common theme. Go ye, remember me, remember my words, and wait for the promise. Act up. Look at Acts 1 and 2. The same theme is carried through. Acts 1 and 2, when the Lord is received uh, uh, up in their sight. Acts 1 and 2 says, listen, it says, Unto this day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible uh, proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. You know, the Lord's message never changed. Amen. It was consistent. It was true. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye shall, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of it to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Act up. The, 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 the mindset was that the Lord was commissioning them and giving them a word, but he was consistent with the fact that, listen, go ye, remember my words, and wait for the promise of the Father. Because there was something about to take place. There was a move of God which they had not experienced before that was going to change their life. That was going to change their life. I believe God is determined for us to be revived, not just through an occasion, but to live a life of, of, of energized in, 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 by the word of God and energized by the presence of God and being filled to capacity in our, in our strength as we adore God and obey God according to his word. Amen. I believe you can walk in the spirit as often as you choose to if you walk in obedience. I believe that if you surrender your will to God, it takes the limitations off of what you would desire to do and allow God to take you to levels you could never attain apart from your obedience. Amen. 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 I believe God has something special for each and every one in this place. 
and he's about to do it as we surrender our will to him. Amen. Luke knew it, John knew it, Matthew knew it, Mark knew it. All of them were waiting with expectation that something was about to pl take place that would change their life. You know, that ought to be our expectation as believers. That every day ought to be a new day. We sing a song, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because I don't know what God has in store. But if I obey and surrender my will to him, God will take the limits off of my expectation and take me to a level that I can only dream of. Yes. Yes, Amen. He'll take you to a level you can only dream of. He'll take you to places that you could never attain nor enter into except God open the door. Amen. 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 Act up. Act up. I'm just waiting for something to shake. I'm waiting for something to give. I'm waiting for something to happen. Why? Because that's the way God operates. He's not complacent. He's not lethargic. He's not lazy. He's not laid back. God moves in a mighty way. Not by power, nor by might, but by his spirit, God moves. He moves. And he's been consistent throughout the Bible. For those that come to Bible study, we see throughout the book of Genesis and, con and concluding in the book of Revelation that God is consistent with what he does. Yes. He said, I'm the Lord, I change not. Neither you sons of Jacob are consumed. He said, I change not. If I bless you in the past, I'll bless you in your future. Why? Because I got the power to do it. Yes. I'm not. I'm not restrained in what I do. I'm God, and there's nobody like me. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, glory! About ready to act up right now. <laughs> Why? Because that's the way God operates. I'm just sitting there, like I'm at the bus stop, just got my foot pat and waiting for God to do what He does. Because He's God. That's why I believe God would always tell the prophets. Or always tell his vessels. Or always tell those that were waiting for a move of God. He'd tell them and conclude almost like he told David. Stand still. Stand still. Wait on me. Why? Because I'm about to do something that the only way it's going to come to pass. If you wait on it and believe it will happen. Just trust me. I'm the one in charge. I'm the one that opens doors. That no man can close. I close doors. That no man can open. About ready to act up. Right. About ready to do what I do because I'm God. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. The Apostle Paul even testified to the power and the authority of the risen Christ and the fact that this was not a hoax because really there was a rumor going around that the Apostles had stolen his body. Yes, yes. There was a rumor going around that he wasn't dead. Actually, it wasn't even Jesus. It was John the Baptist that died. There were so many rumors going around to try to defeat and discourage the people of God. But the Apostle Paul came about real late. Bible calls him one born out of due season. And yet God showed his presence to Apostle Paul and gave him somewhat of a review. Actually, he turned the tape down. He like hit the DVR and ran it by him again. And let him know, you wasn't there, but this is what happened. If God ever do that for you, yeah. sometimes you need to have a refresher and a reminder that God will say, listen, don't you forget where I brought you from. Yeah. I'm going to have to run the tape one more time yeah. so you can recognize that I still got the authority and the power to act up. Yes. Because of God. Because. I do what I do. Woo, glory. He's God all by himself. Ooh, wonderful Savior. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and 3 says, Listen, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. He said, Listen, Peter seen him, and then the rest of the twelve seen him. After that, he was seen above by 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained unto the present. But some are falling asleep. After that, Paul said, he was seen of me. Do you remember in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, Paul was minding his business, going about doing what he did. He was crucifying Christians, had letters in his hand, but he was going there and God knocked him off his beast. And 
had shown himself. Yeah. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, listen, after Cephas saw him, after the 12 saw him, after the 500 saw him, he said, then I did. Paul glory. And see, it didn't matter that it was late, but it was right on time. See, God said, listen, it may look like it's late, but I'm right on time. Yes, yes. I'm right on time. I'm right on glory to God. See, somebody talk about I'm too old for God to act up. Understand this. <laughs> Unless you graveyard dead right now, you're never too old for God to act up. Amen. You're never too old for God to make himself known. Right. You're never too old for God to get in your business and bless your life. That's right. God is worthy. We told Apostle Paul, he said, listen, he said he was last seen of me. He said, after that, he was seen, glory to God. But after that, he was seen of James and of the apostles. And lastly, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. You know, I love the fact that the apostle Paul really was considered the 12th apostle. Because after Judas, who the Lord had selected, even though he was the son of perdition. And then after that, they decided, we're going to have a vote. They voted in Matthew, so you don't see any more about Matthew in the Bible except in the book of Acts. Yeah. Instead of waiting for the promise, they were having a board meeting. And the Bible says that they voted him in, but you don't hear anything about it because God already had his hand on his selection. I don't, let me understand, I'm saying this. God will act up so much in your life that what God has for you yes. is for you. I don't care, they can select it, they can cross it out, take your name off the ballot, but if God be for you, who, God, who can be against you? God is faithful. Yes, and he's worth all oh, glory to God. He's worthy to do what he does because he's God. Yes. Glory, 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 glory. And so when you look at the message, not only in the book of Acts, but throughout the gospel. But in our case, we're looking at Acts. You can see that the message was clear. Go ye, go, go to Jerusalem, go to Judea. He said, but listen, remember what I said and wait for the promise. Go ye. He said, listen, don't, don't just bide your time. Have a mission. Have a purpose. Why? Because I'm sending you somewhere. Yes. How many know that God is sending you somewhere? How many know that God has a purpose and a design for your life? You're not just here to be here. But God said, I got a place for you to go. That's why I'm sending you somewhere. Go ye. Huh? Go ye. And when you go ye, he said, listen. Also, he said, listen, remember what I said. You're not moving in your own strength. You're not going to your place. You're not doing your thing because it's your thing. He said, listen, if I'm sending you, I'm appointing you. I'm acknowledging that it's me that has the hand on your life. I didn't raise you up for you to enjoy you. I raised you up for you to enjoy me. That's right. That's right. Go ye. Go ye. Remember my words and wait for the promise. Look at Acts 2 and 1. They waited for the promise. They waited for the promise. See, the Lord said, listen, I won't be in the 14th chapter of St. John. He told them real quick and stay also in the second in the Acts, the second chapter. But in the 14th chapter of St. John, he told him, I'm, I'm going to go away, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless throughout the 14th, actually through the 16th chapter of uh, St. John. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to leave you another comfort. He's going to be just like me. Yeah. He's going to be able to lead and guide you into all truth. Yeah. Now they come to that momentous occasion of that which the Father had spoken of that would come through the Son. Now they're sitting in anticipation, waiting for God to move in their presence, waiting for God really to act up. God, we've been here for a while. It was 50 days after his resurrection. So you can understand this. There had to be a lot of loneliness. There had to be a little discouragement. Because, see, the Christ that they had been with was no longer with them. Amen. Even though he left words on record, it was a lot easier to see him feed the 5,000. Right. But he was gone now, so now they had to, in faith, believe that what God said was real. Amen. And so they went to a room, and in an upper room, the Bible talks about it, and they waited, and it was about 120 of them in there. It wasn't just the apostles. Men and women, 120, just waiting for the promise.
promise. See, because when you tell somebody a promise, and in the fact that God told them what the promise was, everybody anticipates that it's going to happen because you said so, and one will say to another, and by the time the thing had rose, it was 120 people just waiting because everybody had touched or seen or heard of the Messiah. Yes. But there was 120 just waiting. Yes. For a move of God. Waiting really for God to act up. How many of you waiting for God to act up? How many of you waiting for God to do what he says? Hmm. The Bible says here in, in Acts 2 and 1, it says, listen, and when the day of Pentecost, 50 days after, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, because that's where it comes from. Amen. That's where the move of God has to take place. If the move of God don't take place from heaven where God abides, then it's really not a move of God. We can have our time down here. Amen. We can enjoy the fellowship of one another. But if it don't start in heaven, we're not having fellowship. Amen. We're just having a time. But when the move of God begins by the move of God from heaven, you can expect God to act up. You can expect God to do what he does because he is God. The Bible says they were always one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. In their waiting, anticipating that God would move on their behalf. They didn't even know what to expect. I've heard commentators say like they were waiting for this or waiting for that. He didn't tell them what to wait for but for the promise. Don't lose sight of the promise. If God has spoken a promise to you, don't lose sight of it. Now you know God said what he said, but you don't have the clarity to know what it is, but you know he said what he said. So therefore, I'm, I'm wide open to whatever God's going to do, because if God said it, that settles it. I'm not trying to figure it out. All I can tell you is that from remembering his words, he said it. Amen. And I'm waiting on it. Go ye, remember my words. Wait on the promise. Wait on it. Wait on it. And the Bible says it came and it filled the place where they were sitting, such so that everybody heard each one speaking in their own language. <laughs> you know, these were ignorant men. Some, they were fishermen. They were working people. There are a lot of blue collar workers. Luke was a doctor, but there, that wasn't the case amongst the disciples. So there were those that didn't have the formal or the scholarly education. But the Bible says that every man in the process heard them speaking in their own language and in their own tongue. And interesting part, there were those that saw it and said, listen, this must be something. They must have been drinking all night. They wasn't waiting all night. The Bible says they got a little stir and different folk began to say what it wasn't. See, that's what folk would do. When you're waiting on God and God has made himself clear and has brought to pass the promise in your life, people will stand back, the haters will stand back and say, that's not really what you said. And begin to discourage or defeat what God has already done in your life. Amen. See, when God blesses you, you always got haters. Yes, yes. See, just because you do right, don't mean everybody will applaud you. So when you are waiting on God, and God gives you a clear word in your spirit. There are those who will stand back and accuse it, accuse you, and say that it's really not God, and really you're 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 a phony, you're a fake. That really can't be God. In other words, you gotta wait some more because what you think you receive was really not from God. And most of the time, these are those that don't believe in God anyhow. Yeah. But when God acts up. He makes it clear. When God acts up, he makes himself known. Look what Peter did. Remember Peter, arrogant Peter? Stubborn Peter. Hard-headed Peter. Peter was so upset, he took a knife and cut the ear off of one of the servants when they were coming to get Jesus. Acts as if God couldn't defend himself. I'm going to do it, God. Wait a minute. Get back. I got this. You ever tell God that? Get back. I got this. And the Lord, by his grace, only let you have it for a minute. Because it usually don't work out. But that's what Peter did. The same Peter, arrogant, 
but always had something to say. The same Peter, stubborn, but always willing to speak up and say what he thought, or should I say what was on his mind. Sometimes there was nothing on his mind and he still spoke. Don't laugh, we've done that before. Nothing on your mind, but you still got something to say. Amen. So Peter stood up in the midst because God had anointed him for such a time as then. Look what he says in Acts 2 and 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, the same Peter who said, wait a minute, you sound like a Galilean. Weren't you with him? Remember when they were doing the investigative report? And we're trying to find out those that have followed Jesus. And Jesus is up on the cross. And they're trying to find out those that were taking up company with the miracle worker. With the prophet. With the one like Elijah. And they found Peter and said, you was with him. He said, even your conversation makes us know you was with him. Peter said, I don't know him. And he said, and get the so-and-so, so-and-so out of my face. So he said he cussed. Amen. Got so upset, he just ran his mouth and said what he said. The same Peter. Now, understand this. When God acts up in your life, he can change your attitude to gratitude. He can change your foul mouth to words of freshness and sweetness. Peter stood up. He said, ye men, look at this now, I love this. Standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice in the 14th, chapter, 14th verse of the second chapter of Acts and said, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. For these men are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit yeah. upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and noble day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter stood up and began to prophesy, began to speak what thus saith the Lord. This was not his own imagination. This was not his own words. This was a lot like the time when Jesus came to Peter and said, Whom do men say that I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Some say you're Christ. Some say you're this. You're, you're Elias. Some say you're just a miracle worker. He says, But who do you say that I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he told Peter, he said, Flesh and blood didn't give you this interpretation. Or flesh and blood is not speaking to you, speaking through you right now. But what you're saying, my Father is enabling you to say it. So the same Peter stands up 50 days after the resurrection. And stands up and says, listen, that the, the authority, the power, the, 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 that the promise to that which we were waiting for is here. According to the prophet Joel, he said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. On my spirit will I pour, my, on, my, on my people will I pour my presence. Your servants and your handmaidens. He said, I'm going to pour it and going to prophesy. They're going to speak the word of God. And he said, listen, whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Why? Because we've been waiting for something. And that something is here. The presence of God has infilled us yeah. to the extent that we can speak the word of God with power. God's not ready to act up. Uh -huh. And he said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord 
shall be, not might be, saved. Yeah. That's why it's not my responsibility that folk get saved. It's the Holy Spirit's responsibility that folk get saved. All we do is lift up the name of Jesus. Because if you lift up the name of Jesus and you believe in the finished work of Christ, you shall be, not might be, but will be saved. Amen. 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 So Peter's in the midst of a move of God. So much so that it gave him power that he didn't know he had. And God used him. See, God will use you in a place. Yes. And will use you in a time where you think you are insignificant. Where you think you're unable to handle it. But God will give you power that's not yours. He'll empower you. Dunamis. The Bible talks about power, which is dunamis. Power. And the power came from heaven. And the Bible says it came in as a rushing mighty wind. The stage was set for revival. The stage was set for a move of God. The 20, uh, 37th verse of the second chapter of Acts says, and when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? What's next? What would you have us to do, God? What's the next plan? Then Peter, look at the 38th verse. And Peter said, uh, said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself, yourselves from this untoward generation. Literally what it means is save yourself from this perverse generation. Crooked, perverse generation. Save yourself. Why? Because the authority and the power to be saved is present. Save me. Lord, do whatever you got to do. Save me. I surrender my will. God, save. Act up in my life. Yes. Save me. Do whatever you got to do. Do whatever you got to do. The actions of a few change the attitude of a multitude. Yes. Actions of a few. They never thought they'd have the impact. And here we are over 2,000 years later. Still talking about the resurrected Jesus Christ. Yes. Still talking about the king who sits high and looks low. Yes. Over 2,000 years ago, still excited about it. The power has not waned. The power has not diminished. Still got power to live right. Still got power to speak his name. Still got power to lift up holy hands yes. unto yes. him yes. in whom we have to believe. Act up. It's time, beloved. Time for revival. Time for revival. Time for revival. Time for revival. And the interesting part, the disciples and the crowd and all that with them, they were assured of it. They were assured of it. They knew it. They knew that God had sent them. They were convinced of what God had said. Yeah. They were assured of it. Assured. You couldn't tell them anything else. Yeah. They were assured that God said, go ye. Yes. They were assured of it. Yeah. Had not been the case, they never would have been in Jerusalem. They never would have waited for the promise of the Father. They realized that God was going to act up in their circumstance. They had to go where God was sending them to go. Amen. Look at a few examples of those that were assured of what God was about to do. Look at the testimony of the blind man in Matthew 9, 28. The testimony of the blind man. Glory. See, when God speaks a word in your spirit, it is to change you. It is to it, it is to, to, to quicken in you that which is dead. It's to quicken in you that which should be alive. Look what Matthew 9, 28 says. And when he was coming to his house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touch ye their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open and Jesus straightway charged them saying see that no man know it. But they when they were departed spread abroad his fame in all that country. 
Understand this, there was a test, a blind man believing God and God touched him. And God told him, listen, don't go and tell anybody, but understand this, when God acts up in your life, it gives you a drive to tell somebody. Don't tell me that if God done something for you and you weren't ready to go ye somewhere and let folk know that God has acted up in my life, that God has changed my life. I got to run and tell somebody. There's a blind man, he's been blind. And God saved and healed many, many people. And I'm always amazed that when he told them don't say anything, they couldn't keep it to themselves. How can you, how can you be, be, be introduced to the God of glory and the God of glory act up in your life and you can't tell nobody? Amen. Yeah. I think even when the Lord told them don't tell anybody, he knew they would tell somebody. Uh -huh. Why? Because there's nothing hidden from him. God knew. Go ye. Remember my words. He said, wait for the promise. These blind men, as soon as the Lord touched them, they were so moved by the presence of God that they couldn't help themselves that God had acted up in their life. Oh, glory. Do you know where you came from, beloved? Do you know where God is about to take you? Do you know what God can do in your life? It ought to be cause and it ought to be reason to act up yes. in behalf of God. Glory, glory, glory. There, not only did they, were they short of it because they knew it concerning the blind man, but the crowd also acknowledged it because they saw what he had done and they remembered his words. Yes. We all, that's why you got to keep refreshing yourself in the word of God so you can be reminded of what God said so that when you get bored, when you get lethargic, when you get lazy, you can remind yourself of what God said. And that what he said is true. And what he said is right. Yes. Look at the testimony of the women at the sepulchre. Do you remember the women who came to the sepulchre? They came doing their, their, doing their chore, which was their task, to, to, to uh, prepare the body, to do what they had to do. Amen. And they came religiously and routinely to do what they had to do. And understand this, there was no mindset on their part to be late for what they had to do because the Messiah was laying already in the tomb. Yeah. But look what it says here in St. Luke 24 and 5. And when they were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered, whoo, glory, his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. They remembered his words. The Lord continually and consistently told them that I'm going to rise again. Yes. He said, listen, meet me in Galilee. Yes. Wait for me there because I won't be at the tomb. So when the woman got there, they saw that the tomb was empty. The grave clothes had been folded neat. And they looked and they were astonished and they said they saw two men in shining garments. Amen. And they were afraid and bowed themselves. Yes. And, the, and, the, and the two men turning to me out to be angels said, Why are you here? Yes. Glory to God. Why seek thee the living among the dead? He's not dead. Uh, yes. He's alive. Yes. He's risen. Yes. Why are you here? Uh, and he began to give the same testimony yes. that Jesus had given them for over three years. He said, listen, I'm going to be in, put into the hands of evil men. I'm going to be tortured. I'm going to be crucified. But on the third day, yeah. I'm going to rise again. Yeah. And the Bible declared, even as the angels refresh their mindset, the Bible says that they remember. Yes. Oh, you got to remember what he said. Yeah, you got to remember it, beloved. That's why, that's why when you're going through the Lord will remind you of his word. Even when you're on the mountaintop, the Lord will remind you of his word. Yes. God will let you know, listen, you're not here because you're here. You're here because I have you here. Right. You're not here because of you. 
You're here because of me. God will remind you yes. of his word. Yes. Woo, glory. Yes. Glory. Yes. Bible tells us study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. Why? Because God says, I want you to remind you of me. Yes. I don't want you to walk in your own strength. I don't want you to be deceived and feel like you're getting it done. I want you to understand that it's not by your power, yes. but not by and not by your might, yes. but it's by my spirit. my spirit. So they remembered his word. Yes. Amen. And the Bible said they went and told the up uh, the eleven. And the Bible declares also in the next verse that they looked at him like they were telling them fables. Because the apostles had yet to remember. Hmm. His word. Sometimes, you know, don't be so quick to say it ain't God. Don't be so quick to say God didn't speak. Don't be so quick to call it not what it is. Sometimes you just got to think about it for a while and know that God is in this. Yes. Yes. Act up. Act up. Lord, act up. Mm -hmm. Do what you do, Lord, because if you act up, you'll act out. Amen. If you'll act up, you'll act out. And I can begin to walk in my purpose because I know in whom I believe. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. One more example, beloved. Not only did they, whoo, glory, were they assured of it, they acknowledged it, but they accepted what Christ had done as fact and waited Wait. for the promise. The upper room would have been empty had they not waited for the promise. And there were those that testified to the promise yet to come. Yeah. If you look at one of my favorite personalities in the Bible is St. John 4 and 25, the woman at the well, because they didn't like her much, and a lot of folks don't like you. <laughs> so when you're waiting on God for something, everybody has something to tell you. Everybody wants to let you know that it, it's not God, and, and understand this, your efforts are all in vain, and you ought to do like we're doing, because everybody likes to have company. If I'm going through, I can't go through this company, this uh, situation by myself. I'm going to drag you in it so I can have some company. But understand this. If God told you to wait for the promise, wait. if God told you to wait till I make it clear to you, you need to wait. Yes. If God told you, listen, this is what I plan to do. Wait till I do it. Don't run ahead of me. Don't run behind me. Just stay with me. Amen. He said, because I'm trying to make it clear what my perfect will is for your life. The testimony of the woman at the well, 425 St. John. The woman said to him, I know Messiah coming, which is called Christ. When he came, when he has come, he will tell us all things. I understand this. This woman had a general conversation with Jesus, told him, listen, why are you talking to me? Because I'm a Samaritan. The Jews ain't got nothing to do with the Samaritan. And Jesus spoke to her anyhow. Isn't that interesting? God will read your report in a minute. When you get before God, you can't go to him in pride because God will break you down like a shotgun and let you know that beside me, there is no other. Keep talking until you hear yourself because I'm about ready to speak into your life. This woman had a conversation with Jesus. She thought she was religious. She thought she was this. She thought she was a, just because she was a member of Jacob's family. She was part of the lineage. She felt that she was blessed anyhow. There's nothing you can give me. There's nothing you can tell me. I'm related to Jacob. He said, listen, not only at this well or any other well, he said, those that come after me are going to have some water that doesn't uh, lose its thirst. They're going to have some water that keeps a taste in your mouth for all eternity. I mean, he just wrecked her religion. He just wrecked her uh, uh, mindset as to what it was and who he was. And then she said, well, listen, I'll throw this on him. Listen, we know Messiah is coming. Yes. And when he comes, he's going to show us everything. I don't know who you are, but when he comes, He's going to show us everything. And look at the woman's reply. Look at Jesus' reply. He said, Jesus said to her, I, thou, I that speak unto thee and he. Uh -huh. And upon this, Jesus said, listen, all that you don't talk, all that smoke screen don't mean a thing, because right now you're speaking to him in whom you should believe. If I'm acting up in your life, it's because I want your attention. If I'm making myself known, it's because I have a purpose for your life. He said, be quiet and recognize. You ever tell the kids, you better recognize who I am. Recognize. Be quiet and be still and recognize who I am. 
You say you've been waiting for it? Here I am. Ooh, glory, I stand before you at the door and I knock. If you would act like you have some sense, you'd open the door. You'd receive me because here I am. Here I am. You've been waiting for it. Amen. I'm right in front of you. Yes. Don't act like you don't see him. Yes. Look what he says here. And upon this his disciples and mar marveled that he talked to the woman because the disciples were prejudiced and they saw him talking to the Samaritan woman not only because she was Samaritan and the woman they had a problem with it anyhow. Yet no man said anything to him why, or why seekest thou or why talkest with her. The woman then left her war pot and went her way into the city and said to the men Come see a man. Come see a man. Which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? God acted up so much in her spirit mm -hmm. that she had come to the well to get water. Yes. Brought a pot. Probably had her initials on it because that's when they showed up with the pots. Yes. To get their water. And the Bible declares she left it. She left it. Because that which she was waiting for yes. was made known. See, when you, when you believe in God for a thing, or you're believing God for a move in your life, yes. and it happens, it just upsets your work. It upsets everything. everything. It just it, it, it causes you to be uh, to be so excited. Because that which you've been praying for, my, my, my. God has brought the path. The Bible says she left her water pot uh -huh. and ran and told the men in the city. The women didn't like it anyway. We know why. But she ran and told the men in the city. Yes. And all of them came out to see the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God acted up in one person's life. Yes. So much so that she couldn't keep it to herself. Amen. Amen. The water at the well at that time meant nothing. nothing. But the one she met at the well yes. meant everything. So much so that she wasn't embarrassed. She wasn't quiet. She wasn't timid. But she told him, come see a man come see. Uh -huh. that has told me everything that I've ever done uh -huh. is not this the Messiah. Isn't this the one we've been waiting for? Yes. Act up. Act up. Act up. Let God be released in your spirit yes. to the point that you act up and act out. Let the will of God be performed and manifested in your life through obedience. Yes. Woo, glory. She was never the same again. Yep. Never the same. Blind man. Peter, none of them were saying after recognizing who Jesus was. Yes. If God shows up, he'll show out. Latter part of the scripture. Acts, go back to Acts 2 and 43. Yes. Who? Lord, 2 and 41. See, when God acted up, there was revival. There was revival. That's why I wait on his promise. I wait on his word. I know what he said to me. I don't know what he said to you, but I know what he said to me, so I wait on it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the third part. I'm in the latter part of the promise, waiting on God to do what he says. I remember his words. I've gone and told somebody, because he said, go ye. I've done that. I've remembered his word because I meditate on his promise. And now I'm waiting for the promise. I'm waiting for the fulfillment. Because if God did it with the early church, he can do it with you and I. Yeah. Look what it says here. I believe this, brother. Acting up will cause you to act out because God shows up when he shows out. Glory to God. Look what it says here. Acts 2 and 41. And they that gladly received the word yes. were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Arrogant Peter stood up, and the power of God resonated through his spirit. Yes. And the word was such that they were pricked or convinced in their heart. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were like, if you will, pierced in their heart. Yes. 
at the word of God. They were convicted. See, today you can preach God's word and folk don't get pierced in their heart. But they were pierced in their heart by the Holy Spirit to the point that they had a response to the belief. Amen. Folk today believe something and don't act out anything. Oh, God is moving in my life. Okay, let me see the faith that follows the belief. Amen. Look what he says here. And they gladly received the word of baptized and were added 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayer. And fear, godly fear, came upon any, many soul, every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, so their possessions, their goods, part of the them to all men, every man had need, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat meat with gladness and sinfulness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church such as should be saved, all in the process of a few people changing a multitude. Act up. It only takes a few. It only takes a few. The actions of a few yes. changing the attitude of a multitude. 